Assalamualaikum, dear students. Assalamualaikum. Um, welcome to the class. Today we are going to talk about uh, classical theorists and uh, of realism. And um, Chankya Kotelia is the prominent name in that particular category. He was the classical realist, and he was considered as a very influential person um, in the early um, Indian history. For example, um, Mauryan Empire under his um, you can say the buys um, flourished and uh, they achieved huge, huge success during that period. So Mauryans, uh, they established huge, huge empire during that period. So Chankya Kotelia was actually um, there in uh, 300 BC and uh, he wrote a book, uh, Ars Shastra. Uh, that book is on war and diplomacy. So this book is actually divided in 15 parts. 10 deals with war and diplomacy and five parts deal with economy, governance, and many other things. So we, he was actually the proponent of realist school of thought and he was the actually classical realist, you can say. His book, Arth Shastra, is still being analyzed and discussed in the strategic community around the globe. So every country, every major power in the world talks about uh, this particular book. They consult this book and uh, uh, try to um, dissect the ideas the concepts under this book. So we are going to analyze this particular thing today in detail. So Kotelia was the main advisor of the King Chandragupta Maurya, as I told you before, and under his uh, rule, the biggest ever Hindu empire was established in the subcontinent. As you can see in this slide, um, the Mauryan empire, you know, it stretched over uh, today's uh, Pakistan, some parts of Afghanistan, and then some parts of, you know, all the subcontinent region was under the influence of, uh, you know, Chandragupta Maurya. So this was a um, huge, huge empire at that time. And it was only possible because of Chankya Kotelia's advice, because of Chankya Kotelia's strategies and his realist school of thought. So the idea was to conquer the world for his king. So he wanted expansion, expansion of the Mauryan empire at that time. So they, for that purpose, he came up with the masterpiece Arth Shastra, the book which was written by him. And uh, the crux of that particular book is six-fold policy of Chankya Kutelia, which deals with you know, peace, war, neutrality, marching alliance, double policy. These are very, very basic and simple concepts. And uh, we are going to analyze one by one these concepts to understand the, um, you know, uh, the theory of realism under, or you can say, according to Chankya Kutelia. So by peace, Chankya Kotelia means the only time a king will make peace when he finds himself in relative decline compared to his enemy. Like for example, Indochina war in 1962, India was defeated by the Chinese and ultimately since then China and India never had war against each other and China, India retained, remained in peace with China. Why? Because they knew that they cannot defeat India. So the only time a king will make peace is when he finds himself in a relative decline compared to his enemy. So today, India cannot fight against China because China is a superior enemy. China is a superior power, militarily, economically, politically. It's a veto power. It's a second largest economy. It's a powerful country in the international system. Take the example of America and Taliban. Uh, today, Americans in Afghanistan are only uh, 14,800 and I hope um, many of them have uh, already left Afghanistan. But Taliban, they are, you know, they are now calling the shots in Afghanistan and they are about 65,000 plus. They are well connected, highly motivated and very powerful. So this is the reason that America is now resorting to peace with Taliban, although they never accepted Taliban. But today they are trying to go for peace. So same strategy which Chankya Kudelia gave that if your enemy is stronger than you, then you must go for peace. So this is what the Americans are doing right now. Soviet Union, US Cold War era, uh, both countries were very powerful and they knew that they cannot defeat each other. So ultimately they remained in peace. Although that peace was negative peace, they never fought a war, but uncertainty proxy wars were there but they remained in peace. So ultimately the first strategy given by Chankya Kutelia is peace and it's very simple. If, if, um, uh, if you feel uh, weak against your enemy, then you must go for peace. So this is the idea behind. 
Second most important thing in Chakya Kutelia's uh, thinking of realism is war. And war, he talks about war, um, three types of war, um, open war, uh, undeclared war, and secret war. So uh, Chakya says, when a king is in a superior position compared to his enemy, he will attack and wage war. So he believed that if a country is stronger enough and if a country is powerful enough, so automatically that country would carry out attack against the uh, weaker party. So if you today analyze India-Pakistan situation, for example, in 1965, Pakistan was very, very, uh, you can say, um, inferior to India, militarily, economically, numerically, their forces were stronger than Pakistan and they carried out attack against Pakistan in 1965. In 1971, again, India was in a very, very strong position and they uh, created political destabilization in the uh, eastern part of Pakistan and compelled Pakistan to fight against the Indians. And ultimately, India uh, carried out full-fledged war against Pakistan in 1971 again, and Pakistan lost that war. So it was India's uh, powerful position which always compelled India to go to war against uh, you know weaker party in 1986-87 again india wanted to attack but at that time pakistan developed nuclear weapons and pakistan deterred india at that time so india could not attack at that time but um, india always followed this dictum of chankya kuteria when a king is in superior position compared to his enemy he will attack and wage war so look at the american strategy even today the Americans felt stronger against Taliban, Afghanistan, and they attacked after 9-11 that country. Same is the case with Iraq, same is the case with many other countries around the globe. Um, and the Americans, they never felt um, you know, any issue with them. But they never attacked Russia, they never attacked China, they never attacked other uh, countries like North Korea, for example. Why? Because North Korea also had nuclear weapons. China and Russia, they were very powerful states. So this is the idea behind. When a king is in superior position, compared to his enemy, he will attack and wage war. So you need overwhelming position at that time. Even today, if you do look at the Indian position against Pakistan, so most of the Indian troops are deployed against Pakistan, on the Pakistan border. And this is the reason that they are very aggressive um, in these days. And uh, you have um, uh, analyzed also after the Balakot strike against Pakistan. The second point, the second war is called secret war. And Changya Kutelia in his book mentioned, uh, you know, uh, this particular thing, secret war, in which he says, a sudden attack, sudden attack terrorizing from one side and attack from another side. So this is what, uh, you know, uh, this concept is uh, actually applied on the India's uh, Cold Star Doctrine uh, strategy, which India came up with after 2004. Now, what was that strategy? That strategy was actually a limited war strategy, which India believed that since Pakistan got nuclear weapons and now attacking Pakistan after 98 situation is very risky. So India came up with the idea of limited war under the nuclear overhang after 2004. So this idea uh, was called as Cold Start Doctrine and later on it was also termed as uh, proactive military operations. And now India also calls it a new land warfare doctrine after 2018. Now the idea is to carry out punitive strikes against Pakistan in case any terrorist attack occurs in India, just to punish Pakistan, but in a limited fashion. So this is what we call secret war according to India or Chankya Kutelia, uh, which is called a sudden attack, a terrorizing from one side and attack from another side. So this is what India tried to do after Balakot uh, Pulwama, uh, you know, attack and India carried out surgical strike, so-called surgical strike inside Pakistan. So it was actually under this particular category that when you carry out limited strike and, you know, uh, you try to surprise the enemy. All right. Now the third important factor or war, uh, so, you know, type by the Chankya Kutilia is, uh, you know, um, undeclared war. And what is undeclared war? Undeclared war, which includes secret agents, religion, or superstition, and women against enemies. India has already waged such type of war against Pakistan. If you look at, um, you know, Balochistan and tribal areas of Pakistan, 
India has been funding these groups and we have already covered all these things in previous lectures that India is funding BLA through Iran and trying, you know, and Kulbushan Yadav, Indian spy, he was there in Iran, uh, you know, I mean, last three years and he was funding the BLA militants and other militants in Balochistan. And um, uh, the Indians were also funding TTP and other affiliates in tribal areas of Pakistan from Afghanistan. So these are open secrets now. And the Indians have been doing these things against their neighboring states, like for example, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh. In all these states, Indians have been uh, trying to, uh, you know, support the militant groups just to undermine the security of that particular country. So the uh, three types of war by a realist thinker, Chankya Kotelia, open war, secret war, and undeclared war. So these th three types of wars are still uh, you know, being applied by the Indians. So what we are actually studying is, we are studying the uh, really realist school of thought uh, given by Chankya Kotelia and his strategy, six world policy and its modern application. So this is what we are uh, trying to analyze. So uh, we have already covered this particular part that uh, Kulbushan Yadav, Indian spy uh, was involved in Pakistan, but that he was not the only spy in Pakistan. Previously, Sarabjit Singh, uh, so, you know, and then many other Surjit Singh and many other um, uh, spies, Indian spies were captured in Pakistan and they spent, you know, years in Pakistani jails. And in 2008, we released many, many Indian spies. And Indian footprints uh, have been there and they have been providing weapons, um, you know, to the militants in Pakistani tribal areas, medicines, and other emanations and all these things were there. And I told you before as well that Indians have been, you know, supporting militancy uh, officially under their technical service division, which was established by General V.K. Singh in 2000, uh, probably nine. And uh, since then, Indians have been carrying out, you know, uh, terrorism or uh, uh, such type of covert operations inside Pakistan. Okay, so open war. Um, uh, the first was peace, second was war, and war had three types, open, secret, and an undeclared war. So we have, we have in detail covered those. The third point, Chankya Kotelia, a realist uh, you know, thinker, uh, talks about neutrality. If a king feels that his enemy and he are equal and neither can harm the other, nor ruin the other's undertakings, then he shall choose to do nothing. Okay, so this is what we call balance of power. If you and your enemy, you are equal in number, you are equal in weapons, you are equal in nuclear weapons, for example, conventionally, you are fine. So you will remain neutral. And this is what we have seen in India-Pakistan context in 1986-87. At that time, Pakistan developed a nuclear device and deterred India at that time. Then in 2001 and two again, India came up, uh, came to border. Um, and uh, brought about 800,000 troops after Mumbai, you know, a parliament attack. And they could not attack Pakistan. They remained on the border for um, a year, but they could not attack Pakistan. Why they could not attack Pakistan? Because Pakistan was a nuclear weapon state. So they chose to remain neutral. After 2008, again, uh, you know, uh, Mumbai attacks occurred um, by militants and uh, India wanted to again uh, carry out some surgical strikes inside Pakistan or carry out some limited war against Pakistan, but they could not. Why they could not? Because Pakistan had nuclear weapons. Then you got Cuban Missile Crisis, another event from the history when US and Russia, um, they were, they became very close to, you know, uh, a nuclear war because Russia deployed nuclear weapons in Cuba and the Americans came to know about it. But they could not do anything about it. Why? Because both countries had devastating nuclear arsenals and they were having, you know, devastating nuclear weapons and they could not attack e each other. So what they did, they remained neutral. Fourth important point of Chankya Kotelia is also deals with offensive realism or realist school of thought. And it deals with marching. And what does marching mean? Marching means that um, in simple words, when a king increases his own power and has special advantage over his enemy, he will take part in the force approach of Kotelin foreign policy by making preparations for war. So marching means military modernization and 
preparation for war and how you prepare for war you modernize your military you add more and more weapons and you practice those weapons so this is what the indians have been doing in pakistan india context this is what the us have been doing uh, against russia and china so the indians are spending a lot of money to overcome their weaknesses their operational deficiencies and they are trying to overcome these things and according to different estimates india is you know pouring a lot of money to induct more and more uh, you know weapons modern weapon and equipment we have covered all these things in the previous lectures as well now the fifth uh, and the fifth part of this particular strategy uh, changa kutilia's uh, real school of thought is alliances in contrast to preparing for war a king may require the help of another to protect his own undertakings and this idea of building policy of you know um, uh, an alliance is kotelia's fifth method of foreign policy a king seeking an alliance must ensure that he finds a king more powerful than the neighboring king so which means a king must go for alliances with superior kings with powerful kings to consolidate his power so the idea of realism is consolidation of power you consolidate power you maximize power with the help of other kings stronger kings so this is what the indians have been doing for example in modern time that this is what the other countries have been doing so pakistan cultivated ties with china why because pakistan wanted to improve politically pakistan wanted to improve economically pakistan wanted to improve strategically defense point of view said so this is the reason that china was a superior king and pakistan uh, established defense ties and strategic ties with china now the look at the indians the indians they are also forging alliances with us for example united states of america both countries are in close alliance with each other and we have already covered uh, this particular aspect also India and Russia. Seventy percent of the Indian arms comes from Russia. Uh, their nuclear submarine, their aircraft carrier, their Su-30 MKI aircraft, um, and many other things like S-400. Their Kamov, uh, you know, maritime surveillance aircraft, and many other things uh, which India is coming up with, like frigates, and you know, for in the maritime domain, uh, they are coming up with all these things with the help of uh, Russia, the T-90 tanks, you know, which is the backbone of the Indian army. so uh, they are consolidating uh, alliance with russia and they are adding up more and more uh, weapon and equipment and trying to consolidate their position against pakistan in south asia and indian alliances with european countries um, they are also very important uh, for the economic growth plus their defense acquisitions for example they are buying submarines from um, countries like france germany they are adding up uh, rafale aircraft modern aircraft artillery and many other things uh, with the help of the uh, you know european countries and the us for example indo israel israel is a tiny state but uh, you know in defense point of view in natural centric warfare capabilities israel is one of the best in the world so india and israel they are also in close ties with each other and they are improving their overall capabilities so india is taking help from um, israel in air defense for example barakat is highly sophisticated air defense system which the indians are um, in deal with uh, israel and uh, by 2023 they are going to add uh, the this barakat air defense system for their army air force navy just to protect themselves from incoming pakistani um, aircraft pakistani missiles and other aerial threats so uh, the idea of alliances is also part of realism and realism talks about this particular thing all the realist school um, you know proponents or thinkers they emphasize on this point that a country must forge alliances with other countries just to maximize its power overcome its weaknesses and fill the operational gaps in their overall military capabilities so once it is done that country would be, become a very powerful state in the international system and that country would rule so look at the us for example in modern time the united states of america is in alliance with nato states and with these alliances us and nato countries they are collaborating with each other and they are improving their ties israel is in alliance with the united states of america and european countries and america is uh, supply, you know providing about 3.8 billion dollars of aid to israel and with that aid israel is you know improving its defense against all the muslim states in the world 
So this is the idea behind that with alliances, you can improve your overall capabilities. The last but not least point is double policy. And uh, Chankya Kutilia says that making peace with one and waging war with another. If you are facing two enemies, like for example, China and Pakistan, if India is facing China and Pakistan as enemies, so India did, uh, you know, carried out a peace agreement with China and waged war against Pakistan. So this is what they have been doing. They are waging open, declared, undeclared and secret war against Pakistan, but they, they never resort to violence or, you know, fight against China. Although they had small scale issues um, um, on the line of actual control in Ladakh region, but they never resort to war because China believed that you know, India believed that China is a superior enemy and uh, they cannot uh, take on that particular enemy. Another important thing in Chakya Kothalia's thinking is uh, Mandala theory, for example, uh, which says that in an immediate neighboring state, an immediate neighboring state is an enemy and a neighbor's neighbor separated from one's, uh, oneself by the intervening enemy is a friend. For example, India's immediate neighbors are China, enemy, Pakistan, enemy, Sri Lanka enemy, Bangladesh enemy, Nepal enemy. So look at Iran, for example, it's separated by Pakistan, friend, again, Afghanistan separated by Pakistan is a friend. So this is the, this is the thinking, which is a centuries old thinking, but the influence of that thinking is still there on the Indian foreign policy. And they are trying to undermine not only the regional, their neighboring states, but also they are trying to influence them uh, with their superior capabilities. So the double policy is there and from Afghanistan, they have been creating problems for Pakistan, their consulates are there, uh, their you know, uh, intelligence setup is there in Afghanistan and Iran and they are trying to undermine Pakistani security from there. So it's a double policy, which is still going on. They waged open war against Pakistan. They waged uh, <coughs> a secret war against Pakistan after Balakot surgical strike, for example. And they also try to operationalize their Cold Star doctrine, proactive military operations, the limited war doctrines. And most importantly, they are involved in undeclared war against Pakistan, which is use of spies or uh, religion or, or religious superstition. They are trying to create sectarianism in Pakistan, Shia Sunni Fasadat Jo Hote, na? they are trying, they are behind. Agar aap iske piche chale jayenge, to you'll find that they are behind all these things. Pakistan ke andar bohut sari chizeng ho rahi hai. Jo hume pata hi nahi hoti, lekin ye ho rahi hai. Bohut sari pages bane hoote hai, jiske upar ye manafrat philate hai. So this is what they have been doing against Pakistan since long. So, um, Akya Kotelia is no doubt, uh, he is uh, the classical realist and father of, you know, classical realism. And he has been very, very influential figure historically. And even today, after centuries, his work, Earth Shastra, his book is still being studied by the all the, you can say, military institutions around the globe. And they take advice from that particular book. book. And this particular book is actually the early, early work on this, you know, realism and the theory of realism. So um, if you got any question now, you can ask, please. Thank you very much. This is all from my side.